the next 30 minutes could change your life. with Ron Carpenter. Well, we're talking about restoration. Have I got your attention yet? I just figured I'd come right out of the gate telling you this is a time that could be so important in your life that there's some truths that you need to hear. Hi, I'm Pastor Ron Carpenter. I want to welcome you to the broadcast, Redemption with Ron Carpenter. And just let me speak to you a few minutes before we get started into our message about how important this is. There is the possibility available that God can reach into a season, into an area, into a span of time in your life where you suffered great loss and not only bring the things that you lost back into your life, but actually multiply them and let it be a greater blessing in another season of life than what you lost in a former season. That sound confusing? Here's the problem. Only God can do that. And there are a certain set of parameters that he gives by which this restoration is made available. I don't believe that we have to go through our life bemoaning and mourning and grieving lost days, lost times, and lost opportunities because God said he's a God that restores time. He redeems time. Does that sound exciting? Everybody's lost something. Let's hear how to get it back. Don't go anywhere. Psalm 1. My dad taught me this scripture when I was seven years old, kneeling beside my bed. I can quote it, read along. I'm going to quote it in King James because my daddy thought Jesus wrote in King James. So I had to learn all my memory verses in King James. I remember it so well. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, Psalm 1 verse 1, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But in his delight is the law of the Lord, and in that law doth he meditate both day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The wicked and the ungodly are not so. They're like the chaff blown away by the wind. The wicked and the ungodly shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. Last verse. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now this is the first psalm. For number one, they always taught me begin well and finish well and people will forget what's in the middle. Psalm one, and there's 150 of them. Someone, God is giving you permission to succeed. And some of you, the biggest decision you have to make is to give yourself the permission to succeed. Because nobody around you has, and we live in a world filled with haters. I have never seen a culture in my lifetime that persecutes someone who works hard, makes good decisions, makes sacrifices, and rises to the top in blessing. I've never seen those people persecuted more than in the culture we have developed today. Because in the culture we have today, we want one culture to build the thing and the culture that lives now, we want you to let us run what you built. So we don't want to build nothing. We don't want to sacrifice nothing. We don't want to work 90 hour weeks, but we demand you give us a job at the top of the organization you built. And the reason they don't give you a job at the top of the organization you built is because it's the building it that trains you to know how to sustain it. And if you don't build it, you don't know how to sustain it because you don't know what it took to get there. 
That's why you've got one generation that builds a business and builds a church or builds a ministry and they turn it over to their children and the thing absolutely just falls apart. Why? The work ethic is not there. The sacrifice is not there. The pursuit is not there. The desire is not there. Why? All the things that were built and developed that it took to build the thing were not there in the ones that inherited the thing. I'm preaching. Can I keep going? Are y'all interested in what I got to say? South Carolina is the 48th most impoverished state in the nation, and I'm a prosperity preacher. And so look, while they reject my message, we remain poor. I am. There's something we don't know that keeps us locked 48th and 49th in everything you don't want to be 48th and 49th for. Excuse me, those of you watching online, but I mean South Carolina thanks God every day that West Virginia and Mississippi exist. And all of them, and I know pastors from those areas are desperately trying to bring revelation into those areas that will raise its standard of living because the truth sets you free. But truth so violates where people are that they turn you off when you speak to them because they think you're just jumping on them. Now, we went back and I talked about, what, watch what God is doing here. This was not planned out. This is just God doing this thing. I talked about restoration. Before that, I talked about discipline and disciples. Remember that? Us and them. That if you really want to be free, it ain't God snatching you out of stuff. It's you becoming a disciple. Then I said, God wants to restore, but the word restore means to create new structures, okay? So in other words, to get my life in a place where I'm not vulnerable again for the enemy to take from my life, I got to create structures that at one time did not exist. Then Miss Cheryl Brady came in here and says, Everything that God ever wanted to do for you, you have been walking around with it the whole time. It's just unborn. And she gave her story about being a 15-year-old high school dropout and how now she is probably the most sought-after female speaker in America. That is a huge journey. And so I got to looking at this thing called structure and therein lies the problem. We have been given the word. We have been given the season. The door is now open, but people don't know what to do. So let me help you with what to do, and this ain't highly spiritual, but it will take a lot of pursuit on your part. What I have realized, this is the way God works. It'll be run, 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 bam, God. Run, 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 run. Bam, God! Run, 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 run. And it's the run in the middle that we don't do. We are a bam, God church. And I pursue, and I plan, and I strategize, and I transition, and I move, and I consult, and I pray, and I give, and I sacrifice, and bam, God does something I couldn't do. Gives me favor with who I didn't have favor with. Opens a door I couldn't open. Gives me an opportunity I couldn't have, and then puts me in a place I never could have been myself. And then it starts over again. Run. Run, 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 run. Where are you, God? Run, 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 run. God, where are you? Run, 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 run. Bam, there's God. And then another door opens at another level. He takes you to. Why? Because in between the God, Ron was faithful. In between the God, 
Ron walked out the steps to the process. Are we all, are we talk, do you know what I'm talking about? See, when God took Israel out of Egypt, that was step one. That was not God's goal. That's what gets preached, but that was not God's goal. God's goal was not to get them out of there. God's goal was to get them in there. I have given you a land flowing with milk and honey. Stage one, let's get Pharaoh behind us. Get saved. Then let's go through the wilderness, renewing your mind, thinking differently. Why? Because when you get saved, you got the right heart but the wrong head. And then where does God take you after that? Into the promised land. The promised land was signified by a city named Jericho. This is what Cheryl Brady didn't say. This is what I picked up on. The Bible says, and Jericho was straightly shut up. Their destiny was designed to keep them out. 12 foot thick concrete walls with chariots riding around on top of them. And the place God said is your unborn destiny had a fortified wall designed especially to never let you in. So the place God calls you to go is straightly shut up. And God had a God day that let them in. But read the Israel days that led to the God day. Joshua, walk around it one day. Keep your mouth shut. Walk around it two days, three days, four days, five days. God, this is a big city. We've been wearing the same sandals for 40 years. You're talking about walking. Five days, walk around it six days. Don't you say a word, Joshua. Sometimes the power's not in the shout. Sometimes the power is, can you walk around your mountain and keep your mouth shut? So for six days, walk around and don't say nothing. And nothing's happening. And on the seventh day, walk around it seven times. And on the seventh time, tell the priest to blow the trumpets and the people to lift up a shout. So it's Israel, 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 Israel. God! They blew. They shouted, the walls fell. The people were plundered. Israel goes in, takes their possession. Why? Because they did all the Israel duties until the God day happened, and all of a sudden now we own the city, houses we didn't build, vineyards we didn't plant, wells we didn't dig. God gave us his promise, but I had to do all the runs that led to the God. All right, you need to stay tuned. You know why? Because what you're about to hear connects to what you just heard. And when the two come together, it's going to mean something powerful to your life. The Restoration Principle by Ron Carpenter is a powerful six-message series that delivers a word to help you position yourself into a place of power in your realm of authority. Jesus came to put back in your hand what Adam lost, and you are supposed to leave this building and rule your world. In this dynamic six-part series, Ron Carpenter helps you understand the Restoration Principle and how God uses it in your life. God said, People are going to know that God is in your midst when he restores back to you the things that have been robbed because only God can give you back things that have been taken. This series is available on either CD or DVD. Add the Restoration Principle to your spiritual library for just $40 or more, which includes shipping. Call, write, or visit roncarpenter.com to order your series. Learn to speak to your mouth and make it move. 
just a reminder, for those of you that live in the Asheville, North Carolina and Charlotte, North Carolina areas of this wonderful nation that we live in, I want to let you know that Redemption World Outreach Center is there in your town. We have new satellite campuses in both of those cities and we would love for you to be there at the Leela Patterson Center in Asheville and also at the wonderful Concord Mills Theater in Charlotte, North Carolina. And you wanna know something? It's the same kind of praise and worship, same atmosphere, same wonderful people, same vision, and same preaching from me. So I guess you could say it's the same place at a different place. I wanna see you soon. And now, back to Redemption with Ron Carpenter. Creating new structures. I love the desire of the church that I pastor. You are full of desire. I love that. I, I wouldn't be able to handle it if you weren't. When I go into dead churches, that crawls all over me. Just crawls all over me. That's when I preach ugly. It's when I get in a dead church. I can't stand it. I mean, ugly things come out of me. So I don't think there's a desire problem. But when we talk about changes that seem good at offering time and we wave our, our thing in the air and, and we, we want to go to the next level, you've got to understand before God, you're going to have to initiate the bill process and the Sarah process and the Betty process. You're going to have to initiate it. Say, Pastor, I've, 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 been, I've been a worker on the assembly line and I've just applied for the first time in my life for manager. Okay, right there. Everything changes. That ain't just a raise. Everything changes. You go from doing the job to overseeing the people that are doing the job. You go from doing the job to checking the quality of the people that are doing job and meeting the deadlines with those people. Now you are a manager. You are a mediator. You, are a, you better be good in conflict resolution. You better be good in making multiple personalities be able to work together as a team. See, you, you're sitting there, I've applied for manager. I want to raise. They get $10,000 a year. No, honey, all your structure is going to change. And God may use that job to restore to you everything that's been lost, but the structure of the way you operate on a day-to-day -day basis will change, and that's what God is trying to say. That's where the disconnect is. There is a God moment waiting for you. There is an unborn baby God wants to release, but the way you do your stuff to get inside the thing that's designed to keep you out, it will change. You say, I'm living day to day, but I want to be wealthy. Okay, that's nice, but everything's going to change. Rims are no longer going to be your priority. A set of 12s back in the back, that ain't going to be your priority. Come on, I'm going to jump on your stuff. You're just going to, you're just going to, you know, you're going to learn how to braid your own hair. You ain't going to weave no more. Because you'd rather put $200 in the bank than you would put $200 in your head. Y'all ain't saying nothing. It's called taking your polish and polishing your own nail. Why? Because you are now in a strategy of thinking that some of my common pleasures I will do without so that I can begin to put money and let money work for me and now no longer am I working and making money but my money's working and making money while I'm working and making money now it's like me and my money are both working for me come on somebody and you have moved from a consumer to an investor which means all your structure's gonna have to change they ain't saying nothing I wish I could preach all day I mean I could preach this all day You've been dating for a year and a half. Now you want to get married. <laughs> Everything. 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 
My son got married Monday. My son got married Monday. I got to marry him. 20 minutes before the wedding ceremony started, I said, can I see you for a minute? I couldn't help but get one more shot in at being daddy. So we went off in a room by ourselves. I said, son, I'm not to bring up your past. You're doing good. I said, but you remember over the last couple of years when you were struggling so deeply? Yes, sir. I said, you know, when your daddy was chasing you in the middle of the night and you were hallucinating, you know, when your daddy was there bailing you out, you know, when people were threatening your life and I had to show up, I said, I said, you know, those car wrecks at 3.15 in the morning, I said, I said, you remember all those things? He said, yes, sir, I do. I said, in 20 minutes, you are him. Everything. Everything. I ain't gonna stop till somebody says everything. Everything. You daddy now. In 20 minutes, you're him. He he just looked down. Like like he'd been tased. Changing of the structures. I got about three minutes. Let me see how much I can open. The first thing he said, blessed is the man who walks in the counsel of the godly. So he talked about whatsoever you do, prosper and bless. The first psalm opens up with blessing and prosperity. His leaf shall not wither. You'll be fruitful all the days of your life. Man, that's good preaching. I mean, that's good. It, ain't nobody here don't want to hear that. Whatsoever he do, it shall prosper. I'm prospering cutting my grass. But the first thing he starts talking about is who you're around and the counsel you take. <laughs> counsel of the godly. Yeah. It's just me and you pointed at each other. Counsel of the godly. Or counsel of the ungodly. Who do you stand with? Do you stand with the righteous? Or do you stand with the sinner? So the first thing he did was open up, who are you listening to and who are you running with? Talking about blessing, talking about prosperity. So whose counsel are you under and whose company are you keeping? Because one set of company will make you like a tree planted by the rivers of water. But there's another group that be like the chaff. So whose company are you keeping? So the first thing he talked about was, was counsel. Counsel is exposure. Counsel is the person in Jericho coming to you and telling you what life is like inside. You're out here. It's built not to let you in. So let me tell you what life is like in here to build enough appetite in you so that you'll walk around this thing as many times as you have to to get in it. <laughs> I'm about to blow a gasket. I'm going to let you know enough about the next level to let you burn with such a desire you'll make the necessary sacrifices to be able to get on the other side. Okay? Oh, my time, my time. If I keep talking about this next week, will y'all show up? I just want to know, will y'all show up? I ain't even got to the good stuff. 
Somebody look at three people and say, I will get on the other side of that wall. Tell them, I will. Come on, tell them. I will get on the other side of that wall. I will share with you the stuff nobody wants you to know that's keeping you out. If you'll keep showing up and coming to these services, I'll tell you. Somebody put your hands together all over this building and give God glory. Well, let me end by saying I'm so glad that you have chosen to give us your time. I'm always grateful for that. And I'm holding in my hand the entire teaching set on the restoration principle. Everything that I said in this teaching series that was inspired out of my own personal pursuit to see God recover losses that had taken place in my life. Personal pain, personal triumph, and now miracles of restoration that are already taking place that I wish I could just sit down and have time to tell you all the wonderful things that God's doing in our life since I've learned these truths. I want you to become a covenant partner with this ministry. I want to have an ongoing relationship with you through our direct mailing to you, through our Twitter, through our Facebook, through these broadcasts, through visits on a regular basis through the website. I want it to be like you and our friends. I want it to feel like I know you and you know me. You know why? Because miles do not have to separate us now with all these wonderful tools and technology that God has given us where we can connect and share what God's doing in my life and in yours together through these different venues God's given us. I want to make this available to you as a covenant partner. If you become a covenant partner, then for your first month's gift of any amount, my gift to you, the full set of teachings on the restoration principle. Of course, if you don't want to go that route and you'd like to have these teachings, all of them are available in our online bookstore. And let me end by telling you how, I'm ex how much I'm excited about 212, the point where change happens. That is our leadership conference coming up the 1st of May. Go to the website, get all the information, all the dates, book your reservations, make your plans now. There is no, rest, no registration fee, no cost to you. All you got to do is get here. I got myself, my friend Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church. Darius Daniels is going to be with us. Sam Chan, Phil Cook. It's not a pastor's conference. It is a leader's conference. Who does that include? Everybody who says there's more inside of me. The way God works is somebody needs to speak into your life and unearth what's in you and pull it out. The, you being exposed to the right information around the right people and in the proper environment is key to your development. And we have produced such an environment. It's called 212. I want you to make plans now to be here. I'm so excited about it. And until next time, may God bless you and yours richly. Thank <laughs> you.